We're good. All right. Jeremy Weiss here. We're live at the Sweet and Snack Show. And since, you know, we talk a lot about logistics um, because of where stuff is going and coming. So I want to talk to Ephraim, who's an expert at logistics. And, um, you know, we're going to talk about China to Amazon. But I want to start off, you have a background in this because of your gift company. So talk about the origins of the gift company and what you were doing with that. So I, we started this gift company, going to be now four years. Um, so when we started this company, we had our own warehouse. We did everything on our own packaging, creating the ideas, gift baskets, staff. We had everything together in one space. And then we started realizing that we're more or less seasonal business or we have more sales in seasons than off seasons. And we realized that we have a big time of the year, a big chunk of the year that we don't, we didn't cover properly our budget. So I spoke to some people and people were telling me, hey, you gotta outsource. So I said like, what's outsourcing? Like, how could I outsource this? Like, this well, part of it is because you're f you your dad you run these warehouses so not everyone would just be able to do it because where are your uh warehouses so and that's tactical logistics right. so for me it was a food outsourcing so i knew about outsourcing my warehouses because we have a warehouse in the east coast in new jersey then we have a warehouse in chino in california that's close to the port so i had the warehouse background information that i know because of my dad doing that for the past 25 years so I didn't know how that was, would work, but then I found a co-packer. They told me they'll do everything, the whole packaging and the 3PL part, the public warehousing part, that they'll storage my product and then ship it out whenever I need it to be shipped out. And then I realized that I went from a, over a quarter of a million dollars in overhead to like less than $30,000 in overhead, and that was where I realized that that's how I'm starting to make money. I'm being profitable. So what I'm passionate about is basically and I came up with this whole China to Amazon idea was why have your warehouse, why have your workers, why pay all your bills if you're mainly selling to FBA, just import your products from China, bring it to the West Coast versus till now, maybe you were in the East, the East Coast, maybe you were in the um, somewhere in between, somewhere in the middle of the States, and you had to like bring it into the West Coast and rail it to your own warehouse. Um, for example, like if you want to bring in a container to Chicago right here, you got to bring it to the LA, then you got to pay another thousand bucks to rail it or more to Chicago, and then it comes to your warehouse. You unload it, and then you send their products to Amazon. So we realized is that bring your products into California. It's way cheaper. It's around a thousand bucks cheaper than bringing it to the East Coast. We pick it up from the port. We take it to our warehouse. We unload it. We label it. We know all the Amazon requirements, so we know exactly what we need to do with that product, how many pallets we're gonna send in, how high that pallets will be, how wide it should be, where the label should be placed at. So, you're gonna save here is overhead, because you're outsourcing everything. Because a lot of people don't really know their overhead when they sell online. They're not uh, putting in their phone bills, office expenses, warehouse workers, now you have more because you're more seasonal, you're hiring more. People struggle with putting that into their real cost, but with us, like you know exactly what it's gonna cost you beforehand, so you can know per unit how much it's gonna cost you to get your product into Amazon. So that's a big thing about overhead. Second thing is, it's probably gonna be cheaper if you wanna bring it to the West Coast versus the East Coast, versus um, getting your own staff, paying probably more money to unload them. And third thing is, no headaches like we take care we pick it up from your supplier in China if it's FOB we pick it up from the port and we just deliver into Amazon so basically you know you can grow your brand grow your private label company grow your product line because you know once the product is ready I have nothing to do with it all I got to do is we have a portal you log into the portal you tell us exactly what's coming in you can upload your labels your pallet labels your box labels and into the portal and that's all that's all we need so we schedule the Amazon appointment we get stuff into Amazon so by the time the product comes into the port within four or five days later you have your product received in Amazon FBA so that's around 20 21 days max from leaving China till your products in FBA so replenishment wise if you know that you could be replenished in 20 to 21 days on your product that's huge versus if you bring it to the East Coast 
or in, somewhere in, the, in between, you got you'd need at least 30 to 35 days lead time till you get get your product into Amazon. So saving 15 days in transit is a big thing, especially selling on Amazon. So I want to talk about China to FBA specifically, but uh, in some of the touch points, some of the places it, it touches along the journey. But um, talk just for a second. Uh, where can people find you online? What's the website? It's tactical logistics. Logistics.com. Sorry, without an S. Tactical logistics.com. Tactical logistics.com. So um, talk, just walk me through. Um, it's in China. You're getting to FTBA. Just run me through the different touch points where it, where it goes before it actually so gets into FBA. Sure. So let's say your product gets done. You let me know, hey, my product is getting done next week. So what we do is I give over for the customer my agent in China that takes care of all the legwork in China. So I give them their email. Then I ask the customer, please give me your supplier's email. And I introduce their supplier to our agent. And then we ask your supplier to introduce themselves to our agent from their email. Like that, we both both ways introduce themselves. Like that, we, like that, we both know that you represent me and I represent you. So that gets done. Once that gets done, they let them know when the product is ready. If it's FOB, that means fulfillment on buyer, they drop it off, your supply will drop it off at the port. So they let us know when it's gonna be dropped off. So we know exactly when we're getting it. And then we schedule uh, a, basically a time slot on which boat it will go on to. Like some boats leave at um, Sunday, some leave on Monday, some leave on Tuesday. So there's totally different schedules. So we make sure like if it's gonna get in this, this time, We'll probably hit the schedule, so we make sure that you have your product at this day, like that we have it on schedule, and then we let the customer know, hey, we got the booking, this is when it's leaving, then this is when it's arriving. So let's say once it arrives to the port, usually it takes two days till it gets released, and till it comes to us, until we get into Amazon is another good, well, another 48 hours, roughly. So it's around 13, 14 days transit, so I say around 20, max 21 days, you have your product into Amazon. So that's really the the... the the process. So while your product is on the boat, I would recommend you log into the portal, let us know what's your container number, what product is coming in, so we know exactly beforehand what's coming in. Like that we know we could book in advance an appointment with Amazon, because Amazon's pretty busy sometimes, especially fourth quarter. We have to book in like a week in advance till we get an appointment. So if your product is, let's say 10 days away from hitting the US, we schedule an appointment that day for let's say 15 days out, 12 days out, like this, we make sure we have an appointment. Like this, we make sure that your product gets right away into Amazon and it doesn't have to wait. What are some of the mistakes people make in this process that you've seen have cost them a lot of money and time? Um, there is an option that you could basically deliver your container from the port direct into Amazon. Um, it's obviously a cheaper option because it doesn't have to touch a warehouse. Um, that's where people go wrong sometimes. There's a lot of requirements by Amazon that how your container has to be packaged. You should be able to delivered direct to Amazon. Sometimes they'll accept it, sometimes not. If the product moves around, they might reject it. If there's a lot of cartons, and let's say if 3,000 cartons in the container, they might reject it. If it's oversized packages, they might reject it. So there's a big percentage that they might reject the container. Once they reject the container, that means it has to come to our warehouse or to any warehouse. That's when it gets really costly. Some pe so people who want to make take that risk, if it works, good for you, you're saving money. But if it doesn't work, that's where people can make a mistake. The other ways people make a mistake, obviously, in my opinion, having your own overhead, bring it to your own warehouse, bring it to the East Coast, or to the middle of the States where it's much more expensive and it's just a waste of money. Another way where people make mistakes is dealing with so many different people. You gotta deal with a freight forwarder that picks up your product. They try and do it themselves and they have to deal with all the pieces. So they have to deal with a freight forwarder. Then when it comes into the port, they have to deal with the drayage guy, someone that picks up the port from the port, delivers to the warehouse. Then they have to deal with the agency if they need to get uh, temps, uh, if they don't have enough staff. If they do have enough staff, they gotta make sure that their staff does their work, gets it unloaded. Once that's done, then they gotta label it. So we're experts at labeling, because we're doing this for quite a few years, labeling for all different types of retailers, so we know all the requirements, we know how to match them up with the right boxes. We keep each SKU separately, so we know we don't make that mistake, so a lot of people have that mistakes happen in the warehouse. 
Um, other ways is that you got to schedule a trucker to trucker into Amazon. So all these um, headaches that you have in the way how to get your products into FBA is not needed if you just do use our program because you have one point of contact. You got to upload one times labels and information. Got to let us know one time what you want. And that's all you need to do. You heard it live from a sweet and snack show. Amazon. You need to get your China directly to FBA through something like Tactical Logistics. Check out tacticallogistics.com. Thanks. Thank you. Nice work.